And I pray that he'll give you his wisdom, which is a supernatural wisdom. And that you'll flow in what he's called you to flow in. And that you'll hear his voice, not, not your own voice. And that you'll do what he says. And that you will not believe the propaganda of the mainstream media, but you'll re believe his report. Because I guarantee you, the world can plan whatever they want. In the end, God will have his way. Amen. Even though he may not seem to for a time. Which it does seem like, hey? Right? Let me tell you, it's all part of his plan. We serve a good God. And he's still in control. And he's still on the throne. Even though you don't feel that that be the case, he is. Even though it may not seem like it, it is. This is the 12th in the Permanent God series, and I'm going to end it here. And we've had a look at different uh, sections of this. We first had a look at the speaking God. God is a speaking God. He's a permanent God, but he's a speaking God. He's a seeing God. He's a pursuing God. Many people say, I'm going to pursue God with all my heart this year. And may you do that. But never forget that God pursued you before you even tried to begin pursuing him. He pursues us all the time. The problem is, do we hear that gentle knock? The providing God and how he takes care of us. And the giving God, is, is, that's part of his nature, just who he is. And may we part may we be like that the hearing God, the restoring God the loving God the omnipotent God and then we looked at last week the omniscient God and today we're going to look at the omnipresent God in other words it is just a fancy word for God is everywhere present okay omni, everywhere present Okay, very easy to remember What does that mean when you hear God is everywhere present? He's all over. He has a glass. What's inside there? Nothing. He has a piece of paper, okay? Okay. What's inside there? Mm. Paper, okay. Now, I'm going to dip this inside here. And when I pick it up, this is still dry. Why? What was in there? Did you see the air? But was it there? Why? It's the same with God. We don't see him, but he's everywhere present. The world doesn't acknowledge it the majority of the world, yet God is still here. He's present everywhere. You can and I can hide nothing from God. Nothing. Would you read with me in Psalms 139 verse 7 through to 12? It says there, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I free, flee from your presence? It's a rhetorical question. In other words, nowhere. There's nowhere that we can hide. Nowhere where we can go that he's not. If I go up to the heavens, any of you been there? You're there. You can try and go there. He's still there. You can go to Mars and have all these ambitions and go there and hide and he's still there. If I, may, if I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawns, if I settle on the far side of the seas... Even there your hands will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If you will allow him to, he will guide you. Verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. For the darkness is as light to you. And I think many people try and do things and switch off the light or they hide and they think they are hiding things from God. Yet God, even in the darkest of places, it's like broad, 
illuminating light that he sees everything that is taking place. There is nothing, nothing that God doesn't see, nor that he does not hear, because he's everywhere present. And while you're sitting there, he's present right here, but while the guy is sitting in China, God is present there as well. And is it something you can comprehend, any of you? Jeremiah 23, 23 to 24 says, Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord? And not a God far away? Can anyone hide in the secret place so that I can, cannot, hide, cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do not I fill the heavens and the earth, declares the Lord? He fills the heavens and the earth. Which is the furthest planet? Anyone know? Is it? Is it Uranus? That's what we know. Or we think. Is it? Even there God is. The Bible says he holds the earth in the... Can you comprehend the magnitude of God? When we have a look at the attributes of God and we look at his omnipresence and his omnipotence and his, 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 you know, his, all, his all knowing, he knows everything, and his omnipotence and his incredible power, how can we try and put God in a box? How can we try and hide yet all of us? Some other time in our lives we try and do that. Do you remember Jonah? God said, I want you to go there. So what does he do? He goes in the opposite direction, think, thinking that he can run away and hide from what God called him to do. And then eventually the, the storm, he eventually says, chuck me overboard. It's my, I'm, the, I'm the reason I'm going to die. I'm done. Because I'm not going to do what God says. Gets into the sea, what happens? God sends a fish, swallows him up. He eventually repents and while he's in the fish, where was God? Present right there. Because he's everywhere present. And he repents and then God gets him chucked out by the fish on the beach on the shore. May we never think that we can hide from God. It is an incredibly foolish thing thinking that we can hide from God. I find it sad in this day and age where I, I, I think it's great to have vision and I think it's awesome to run to accomplish vision. But I think there are certain things that are unwise. Like uh, having a multi-planetary species, uh, human beings. In other words, flying us to Mars. It's not going to happen. Okay? If God intended that, with that, there would be people there already. Can it be done? Possibly. Will it work? There are so many people dying of poverty and we are playing with billions, trillions, throwing them away. Yet, do you think that's the heart of God? That we become the Tower of Babel yet again? Do you think that's what he wants? Or do you think he's going to allow the Tower of Babel to be fulfilled yet again? I guarantee you he will not. We have become too clever for our own boots. And he will cut those boots down to the right size, let me tell you. We sadly think that God is localized like all other gods to, of the local deities that we have around. But God is not. He's not limited to time and space because he is God. 1 Kings 8 verse 27 it says, But, but will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens cannot contain him. Even the highest heavens. What do you think is the highest even that doesn't contain it. What you think is the end of the... There's even more. We cannot even comprehend it. How much less 
the temple I have built. And we think that God is confined to a building or one person. No, no, no. He's not confined to anything. You can and I cannot confine God at all in any way. Because God transcends all of those things. Nothing can con contain God and hold him back. Nothing. God is everywhere present as we've... I think most of you believe that. And I trust all of you believe that. But how does it affect your life? We know this, but what does that mean? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? In your everyday art living, in your everyday working out. Every now and then I say something and I say, oh, sorry, Lord. Okay. Makes you aware of what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're saying. Okay. What else? What about the fact that you're never alone, which is what you're saying? We are never truly alone. Who of you sometimes have felt very lonely this year? Yes. Put up your hands. Look how many people. Put up your hands. Come on, be honest. Many of you here. Did you ascribe to that lie? Excuse me? Yes. You felt alone. Were you alone? But you believed it. And that is the problem that we need a paradigm shift away from our feelings to the truth. God says, I am with you. Here we read in Hebrews 13 verse 5. Listen very carefully. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I'm with you. And the next time you feel alone, what must you do? What are you going to do? Say, Lord, thank you that I'm not alone. I'm feeling that. Would you come and fill my cup right now? That this feeling of emptiness and loneliness dissipate right now in Jesus' name. And I promise you, if you spray that from an honest, sincere heart, he will fill that cup. And he will remove that spirit of loneliness. Hello? And I want to encourage you never ever to believe that you're alone ever again because you are not. Matthew 18, verse 19 to 20, probably most, one of the most well known passages of Scripture. Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And what does he say? I want you to go and do this. And then what does he say? You're baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And then what does it say? And I will be with you even to when? To the end of this age. And as this age is wrapping up, let me tell you it's wrapping up. If you cannot see that, you are very blind. Okay? Come and sit with me for a few minutes and you will realize the truth. These wars everywhere and rumors of wars and this one wants to take over this and this one wants to do it is shocking but here it says Jesus said I will be with you even to the end of the age not the middle of the age to the end of the age that's for my mom that I added that in number two We have God watching over us. Do you know that God's watching over everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you think? Hello? And many people think that God is watching from afar. Oh, is it? Is it? No, he's not. He's seen right there. And guess what? When I thought of this, I thought I saw a magnifying glass. You know what? He sees things. Who is for you old folks have a magnifying glass? Many of you. Because you can't see. And he sees through that magnifying glass a million times magnified. At your heart, at your motives, 
at your impure thoughts, hello, that is God. There is nothing, nothing that we can hide from him. Because he is omnipresent, everywhere present. And there is nothing that we can do that stops him from seeing that. Deuteronomy 2 verse 7 says, The Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you and yet you have not lacked anything. Who of you can say you've lacked anything? Hello? None of you. Yet we will still grumble and moan and me, 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 me. Uh, that's how, have you heard a little kid whining? Me, 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 me. How, what does it make you feel like? <coughs> Come on. All the older folks know exactly. Mm. Give that kid a hiding or whatever. The, why, yeah, yeah. What do you think God put God there when you mm, don't have enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, he supplies every one of our needs. I don't see any of us unclothed. You're all looking beautifully clothed. All of us have food. He has taken care of us and he continues to take care of us. And here, these people, what is, this, what is this talking about, this scripture? Who is it talking about? Where were they? Why were they there? Why were they there? Because they were under the disciplining hand of God. And even though God may be disciplining you at this present moment in time, He's there with you 24-7, 365. Hello? Because he said, I'm everywhere present. And I will still be with you. And I will still take you through this. And I don't want you to be disciplined. So learn the lessons quickly. That you don't go 40 years. That you can go on the 7-11 day journey instead of 40 years. Some of us go not just 40 years, we go our whole life and we don't learn the lesson that he wants us to learn. And all it was was a 11 day journey. May we repent of God and say, Lord, I'm just not learning this lesson. Would you come and be gracious to me and cut this from 40 years down to the actual time it should be in my life from this day forward. Number three. Kian, I forgot to tell you, just change the, the plane there. It's not spelled right. P-L-A-I-N. Number three. We have God seeing things in plain sight. God sees everything in plain sight. There are many people that plan evil behind your back. But that's what I said. I forgot to get it, change it. There are people that will try and plan evil against you. Do you think God does not see? God sees. Do you think that they will not be rewarded accordingly? Or judged accordingly? Or disciplined accordingly? I guarantee you it will, their evil will be shouted from the mountaintop. These draconian lockdown demonic laws that have been put in place is the work of Satan and his minions. And they have, those government officials, and I say this without any qualm, they can do whatever they want to me because it's the truth. These demonic government leaders that have succumbed to this plan, this globalistic plan, of locking down people. It is, has it built anyone's lives up? Mm -hmm. It has destroyed millions of businesses. Countless millions of lives. Right? Because the Bible says if you cannot work, you cannot eat. And they've stopped people from working, hence they can't eat. And it has caused many, many businesses to go under. Many lives to be devastated. 
Was this the plan of God? No, this is the plan of Satan. And they've got many different agendas which we won't get into, but whatever the agenda is, guess what? God sees it in full sight. He knows exactly what's taking place. And do you think their day of reckoning will not come? I promise you their day of reckoning is come. And many of us would think, well, it was these guys that planned it up and the, government, the other government officials went along with it. If you go alongside evil, you're a partaker in it, you will have the same discipline coming your way. Hello. And all these government officials that have succumbed to this and fallen for this and gone with this plan, which is nearly every country in the world, those government officials who were called to lead, okay? And leadership is synonymous to servanthood. Godly leadership is different though. Christian leadership is godly leadership, serving people. They have come, 99.9% of government officials are there in it purely for themselves, not to serve the people who they're actually there to represent. And let me tell you, they'll have to stand before God. Listen to what it says in Micah 2 verse 1. Frightening. Woe to those who plan iniquity, sin, godless things. To those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. Just because it is in your power to fire someone doesn't mean you should fire them. Some of you have employees. And some of you think you have the right just to... Do you? Do you really? Did you inquire of God? And we need to say, God, what is the motive of my heart? Is this what I'm wanting to do pure and right before you? If it's not, don't do it. Because if you do, you're going to stand before him. Because he, remember, he's omnipresent and he's looking there with a magnifying glass. Not to see how he can catch you out. Hello. It's not God. But he sees the motive of your heart. That's why we need to say, Lord, search my heart and find any wicked way that is within me. There are so many, it, this world has become totally, totally crazy. Look at China. Is it a, a huge country? Do you think it needs more land? Do you? It's got enough, it's got enough I think, hey? yet it's not enough. Now they want Taiwan. And they're saying we'll take it over. By force if needed be. Why? Why? Because of a spirit of? That is the spirit of our day and age today. Everywhere. Never been grateful for what we have. And I'm not saying don't have an ambition to grow what you have. God wants us to be good godly stewards of what we have. But the spirit of greed is evil. It is evil. It is a, it is a spirit of the, the love of money. And it causes people to go into terrible, godless decision making. May we not be a part of that. Iran wants the whole of Israel obliterated. Why? Do you know that the, if you go and study up, Israel is the only, it is the only title deed that was given, land title deed, in the world that was given by God to someone. Yep. And it was given to the Jews. Yep. And it was this much land and it's dwindled down to this much land. And even within that, they still want it, and they say, we want it 
Yet they've got, Iran has got way more. I, mean, I don't even know how many times Israel can fit into Iran. Mega. Everyone wants Israel. Why? Because it's not about them. They hate the Jews. Never, uh, never been thankful for what we have. It is so sad, but it's the spirit of our age. Always wanting what belongs to someone else. Never been gra grateful for what you have. And you will scanive and you will backbite and go behind their back to their detriment. You don't care. You, if you trample on them, that's fine. Guess what? You can do that, but your day is coming, according to the word of God. Hebrews 2 verse 8 says, And put everything under his feet. That's what's going to happen. In putting everything under his feet, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Nothing is not subject to God. Nothing. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to him. Is that the truth? Yes. There are many things. This world is not subject to him. Hello. At this present moment in time. Is it? But there's going to come a day and age where God says, this far no further, and he's going to cut it short. And, say, and the Bible says that he will speed things up. Because if it were not so, there would, not be, there would possibly not be one believer that will survive. And I don't know if you've realized, if you see what's going on around the world, you'll realize things are speeding up at an incredible rate. Hello? I think you are informed and can see it. God is allowing this because he's winding things down. The clock is winding down. The question is, are you aware that he's present? Right there in your situation. And he loves you incredibly and will never leave you or forsake you. And he will n not allow anything, nothing will he allow to stop his plans from being fulfilled. Do you know that Israel has bombed Syria twice this last month? Did you know, who knew that? Let me see. Not one of you. You knew because I told you. Because Iran says we are going to obliterate Israel from the face of the earth. If you don't know that, that's a fact. They've said that numerous times. So they, they're trying to import nuclear weapons and those kind of things. So Israel bombed Syria. Well, it, it's not Syria, but I mean, it is Syria. But they bombed the port of Syria because of cargo that they thought had... They know. They don't, they don't bomb, let me tell you, unless they know. Okay? Their, their intelligence is second to none. Yeah. So they took it out. Second time. You go and read Bible history and how things are now shifting and falling into place. And where you read about Gog and, and Magog and all of that and how things are going to align. For, do you know that um, Iran used to supply oil to Israel. Now they hate Israel. In the 70s. Look how, look how things have changed so quickly. Now Iran are biggest buddies with? Magog with? With Russia. And who, who's coming against Israel? Magog. Is Russia and? Persia. Persia was only now changed recently to, um, to Iran. In this century. I think it was 1930 or whatever. No, I can't remember. Do you see how things are shifting and falling into place at an incredible rate? It is very exciting actually living in this day and age. God sees everything. And I'm telling you right now. Nothing. Is going to obliterate Israel. 
even though they try and they're going to do all these things and God will not allow it. Because then it will go against his prophetic word. So he's, that's not going to happen. But you are seeing things falling into place. And when you see all these puzzles falling into place, the Bible says, know that your time is near. Keep watch. Because I'm not just keeping watch. I'm present. 